Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're getting wild at the San Antonio Zoo. If you love pizza, this is your next pizza that you have to try. This is a massive serving right here. When it comes to your table, you will be intimidated, but don't worry, you can take it home if you don't finish it. Absolutely. Wonderful, look at that. That looks like a tasty snack for that person. It's the Super <laughs> yummy. I'm gonna eat all of this. Yeah. We're taking an excursion around San Antonio to check out restaurants serving up some wild eats. The first stop on today's wild adventure is the San Antonio Zoo. Thank you so much for tuning in to a very special episode of Texas Eats here at the San Antonio Zoo. We're gonna be going inside and finding out information about eight different animals. We're gonna see what they eat, which is the most important part, right? And you won't believe what the bats eat. It's this pile of mush, it's weird, but they love it, so it's a good thing. Plus, we're gonna be giving away a family four pack of tickets to the San Antonio Zoo. We're gonna have a seven letter word that's gonna be given out throughout the show, so you make sure you gotta write down each letter, okay? And then you go to ksat.com slash Texas Eats, enter the secret word for your chance to win. Now, we're gonna go meet with their senior animal care specialist to go see what one of their most popular animals at the San Antonio Zoo eats. Joining me here is Justin Kingle with the San Antonio Zoo. And as you can see behind us, we got another star out here at the San Antonio Zoo. Talk to me who this is and what it is. So this beautiful lady, this is Arizona. She is one of our jaguars we have here at the San Antonio Zoo. And right now she's eating a little bit of her breakfast. So they actually are a carnivore, so they're gonna eat a lot of that meat substitute there. So she herself gets kind of a ground up meat kind of material. And they also get what we call a variety of a meat, which is a chunk meat kind of a deal. Like a little piece of steak that we would maybe eat on a kebab gets used up and chopped up for them to be able to eat. We'll sometimes hide it in different areas in their exhibit to have them explore naturally and look for their food. Um, also, you can see she's kind of had her filled a little bit and now she's gonna go find what else we hit around for her. She just ate that like a snack. She just licked it up with her tongue and the steak was gone. <laughs> so exactly. like, how much meat do they consume in a day? So we actually keep it very, pretty variable for them as to how much they get on a daily because out in the wild, they're not naturally gonna eat a single amount of food every single day. And they're pretty elusive, right, in the wild. So when they're here, to get to see them this close, I and mean, this is incredible. She can be almost sitting in plain sight and sometimes people walk right by them and don't even see them. Their camouflage helps them to be able to break, basically blend into those areas, break up that pattern of that body itself. So you really don't see that figure of that animal and that hunter when they're out there looking for their food. I mean, I would grill up some of that <laughs> steak right there and you know, right on, put on some kebabs and stuff and do it big. That looks absolutely just fantastic. She is a gorgeous animal. Thank you so much for showing her out here. That jaguar ate a steak in one lick. It's incredible, it was just gone. Now, if you love steaks as much as this jaguar does, you're gonna love Bandit Barbecue. Right now, we're heading to Southtown to a barbecue joint with a little West Coast vibe. Now we're here off South Flores, just south of downtown to go inside of a new barbecue spot that you gotta try. This is Bandit Barbecue. Joining us now is Brandon Peterson. He's the owner out here at Bandit Barbecue. And in front of us, we have a complete, uh, what would you call this? A smorgasbord uh, of meats yeah. and sides and all the deliciousness. What is sitting right here in front of me? It looks like a, like a mashup of two different cultures. This is our Hawaiian bowl. Um, it has a Hawaiian mac salad on the bottom and then pulled pork and teriyaki drizzle. And today you've got uh, house-made hot sauce and jalapenos on there too. That's the way to do it, man. <laughs> Why Mac salad? Why a Hawaiian influence? I live in California for the past 15 years. I just fell in love with this little Hawaiian place that does really good Mac salad. And I like it better than mac and cheese, so oh. that's why I put it on the menu. That's a fun little spin, though. I mean, because there's only a couple places here in San Antonio that are making mac salad, right? But I don't know about any barbecue spot that's doing this. Yeah, no. Here we go. I'm gonna get a little jalapeno action on there. That's the bite. I really dig that. That's good. Mm, thank you. Your pulled pork is so tender. It has a nice little bark on the outside. Tons of flavor. You gotta get it with the hot sauce. That's where it's, that, that extra level of flavor is yeah. coming from. And now the jalapenos, are you making those in-house? In are you pickling those here? We're pickling those here in-house, yeah. Those are amazing. Thank you. They have a really nice sweetness to them, but then you get that little kick from the jalapeno. 
little vinegar bite too on there. So it's a little bit of sour that you want there to kind of balance out that contrast from the barbecue. And the mac salad, that tastes like Hawaii. That, that is the idea. You right? know what you're doing out here. <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever had Hawaiian mac salad and you love it, well, guess what? They serve it here and it's absolutely incredible. It tastes just like an authentic Hawaiian mac salad and they're serving it up with their pulled pork. You can get a little bit of hot sauce on top of there. You put on some of their pickled jalapenos that they're doing in house, change your life. It's delicious. Talk to me about what's going on right here. What kind of sandwich is this? All right, so we've got the brisket cheesesteak here, which is slow smoke brisket, peppers and onions grilled up and all mixed together and stuffed in a hoagie roll and then topped with house made queso. Also more hot sauces. And more hot sauces. Yeah. So are the hot sauces your own recipe you made uh, these They are, yeah. Yeah, so we, we make both of those. I just started making the green one last week, so that one's new, but I've been making the red one for probably a year now. Delicious. So, yeah. Thank you. I love what's going on. Okay, so here we go. This is like the barbecue cheesesteak. Give it a try. This is kind of funky stuff to have on a barbecue menu. Why? What's making you think outside of the box? I just, like we do all the, you know, most of the normal Texas stuff, but I just, I like taking the barbecue and making other dishes with it for myself. And so I figured maybe other people would dig that too. That's wild. It's so simple, but it's also, you don't see it everywhere. Yeah. It's so good. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna take another bite. And it's fun because the, the queso has, a, it adds a really nice flavor to the barbecue. All the veggies on there, the tomatoes, the salsa, that's really good. If you've ever had a cheesesteak, erase that from your mind because the brisket cheesesteak here is totally different. You have the brisket that comes right off the pit and they load it up with that nacho cheese on there. You have it inside that little hoagie roll. It's really good. With the fresh veggies on there, you can't go wrong. This right here, this is the platter that you have to try. Get a little bit of feel for what you guys are doing out here. Talk to me about each item here on the, on the platter. All right, well, we've got brisket. So we've got a couple of slices of point there. We've got some pulled pork. We've got the mac salad that was on the, um, the Hawaiian bowl and potato salad, mayonnaise and mustardy, fresh dill, dill relish, the pickled jalapenos again, the hot sauces, and then we have um, two of our house-made barbecue sauces. Um, the spicy barbecue sauce is my granddad's recipe that's uh, roughly 60 years old. Uh, so that's, that's what I grew up eating when he did barbecue. And then we have our bandit gold sauce, which is a mustard kind of kind of Carolina style. All right, brisket is king in Texas. And of course, you're making good briskets out here. Look at this guy. Should hold up on its own weight, which it's doing. And then you pull on it and it comes right apart. Pass the brisket test, right? <laughs> this is really good. It falls right apart. I got to try some of that bark on there as well. Here we go. Good? All right. That's bomb. Wow. You make a really good barbecue out here, man. Thank you. If you want to try a little bit of everything they have out here, you got to get the barbecue tray. It comes with the brisket, comes with the pulled pork, the mac salad, the potato salad, and the different sauces that are on there as well. But the brisket is absolutely delicious. I got to say, I think it's one of the top three brisket spots now in San Antonio. You have to try it. It's this little hidden spot here right next to the train tracks off South Flores. You would, you would drive right by it if you didn't know it was here, but you gotta stop in, try the brisket. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. I think you guys, you have a home run idea over here. The logo is cool enough that I'm gonna get a shirt on the way out. This is a cool spot. Brandon, awesome. thank you so much thank for having you. us out here. Really great stuff. I recommend everything on the menu out here, but you gotta try the brisket when you come out. It'll change your life. The pulled pork is amazing as well. The sandwiches, the Hawaiian bowl. It's weird combinations that you didn't know you're gonna love. Come try it out. Cool stuff, man. This is the spot to come to. If you're looking for the next barbecue hotspot in SATX, it's right here, baby. We're getting wild here at the San Antonio Zoo, and with me right now is Caitlin Rohde. She's an animal care specialist out here at the zoo. And right behind us is a gorgeous creature. You might have seen it on a very popular animated movie called Madagascar, right? Absolutely. This is a fossa. Her name is Kara, and they are only found on the island of Madagascar off the east coast of Africa. They, in fact, are the largest predator on that island. Yeah, and they're terrifying in the cartoon, so they... <laughs> They have to be like that in real life, right? No, but actually, I mean, 
This is a really gorgeous creature. It looks almost as like slinky, like a, mm -hmm. like, you know, looking kind of like a, a weasel or something. Very true. They're very similar to weasels or civets. That's actually who they're most closely related to. Um, but a lot of people say they look almost like a mix of a monkey, a cat, a weasel, and uh, I already said <laughs> whatever that. else. A long, yeah. uh, long tail. <laughs> it's, yeah, Madagascar, right? It's got some, mm -hmm. some strange creatures on that island. Me too. But this is definitely one of them right here we're looking at. Look at that long tail. Yeah. Now, what is it eating right now? I see that you kind of dispersed some food along throughout its exhibit. Yep, so right now she's got some chunked red meat, and then today on her menu was also some uh, fuzzy mice. Fuzzy mice. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mice lovers. That's just how it goes, okay? Circle of life. Circle of life. And I, I see them right up there. She's working on something up there. Yep. And you have some right here in the front as well. Now, is this also a very diet? Are the predators kind of, that's what I have learned now at the San Antonio Zoo. Mm -hmm. There's a very diet for the predators. Yes, there and is. And that involves eating a lot one day, eating not so much another day. Yeah, so again, that simulates kind of what they do out in their natural environment. They may or may not find food every day. So we want to be able to offer them a variety and a variety of amounts as well. Wonderful, look at that. That it looks like a tasty snack for that fossil. <laughs> Just eat the mouth. It's Super like, yummy. <laughs> that looks like a tasty snack over there. Caitlin, thank you so much for showing off this gorgeous animal. Coming up next on Texas Eats. I wouldn't even use the word simple with this. <laughs> this is, it's complex. If you love pizza, this is your next pizza that you have to try. Now it's time for this week's wild secret word giveaway. The first letter is the letter C. Write down all of the letters and at the end of the show, enter them on ksat.com slash Texas Eats for your chance to win a family four pack of tickets to the San Antonio Zoo. Now it's time for Texas Eats Wild Trivia. How much meat can a tiger consume at one time? 49 pounds, 112 pounds, 88 pounds, or 17 pounds? We'll have the answer for you after the break. How much meat can a tiger consume at one time? The answer is C. A tiger can consume up to 88 pounds of meat at one time. Now back to Texas Eats. Welcome back to Texas Eats. With me here is Caitlin Rohde, and right behind us is this gorgeous cat. You see it has a little snack right there for it. This is Indira, our clouded leopard. Um, she is one of the biggest carnivores in the small cat family. So today she's got a variety of chunked red meat, so her version of a steak, and a little bit of mackerel as well today. 
mackerel. Ooh, mm -hmm. it's a little fish, a little protein coming from different sources. So how much food do they eat a day? The Sundays she'll get really porked out. She'll get quite a bit of that chunked red meat or ground meat. Um, some days she'll just get a knuckle bone to chew on. And then the other days when she's just got a little bit of food, she'll maybe get a small mouse or a small rat. And that allows her to kind of simulate uh, what they would eat in their natural environment because they don't eat the same thing every day and they don't yeah. get the same amount of food every day. She is one of the only species of cats that can climb up a tree head first and then down a tree head first. Yeah, that's cool, like to be able to go up and down like that. Absolutely. That is so cool. The San Antonio Zoo has been here for decades, and another place that's been here for decades is Sorrento's Ristorante. If you're looking for some killer Italian, then you need to head down onto Broadway. Now we're here off of Broadway in San Antonio to go inside of a restaurant that's serving up the flavors of Italy, Sorrento Restaurant. Joining us now is Margarita Chacon. Now you have a full spread of food right in front of us. Thank you so much for having yes, us David, out here. Yes, David, thank you. And everything looks and smells amazing. We're gonna start with this appetizer that you have right here. Talk to me what's going on. This is our fried calamari. As you can see, the batter is very light around it, but very crispy. Some seasonings around that. And this is our homemade marinara sauce. How long has the restaurant been here? We've been here 19 years. 19 um, years. My mom and dad started it. So with the support of San Antonio and Alamo Heights, we're still here, praise God. Yes. Still doing it still out here. Still doing it, yes. And you're having we all this wonderful food. just expanded as well. You have different sauces and there's different things that go into different sauces. Correct. But some people just look at it, hey, it's a tomato sauce, so it's all the same. We don't use a lot of ingredients in there. There's only three ingredients in our sauce. And once you see that olive oil on top, it's done, it's flavorful, it's fabulous. You cook it first with the olive oil, you, you cook the onions, right? Correct. But when the oil reaches the top of the sauce, it's done. It's done. That's a, That's a little moment. secret, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna cost you. <laughs> That's a little secret. Oh, wow. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Yes. These are amazing. Thank you. The seasoning on the outside is it's bold. It has a lot of peppery, kind of bold seasoning on there. But then you have the crust, nice and light. Sauce is where it's at. Though. Yes, oh, my it goodness. Is. It's the sauce. Yes, it's the sauce. Wow. You could, yes. you could dip this napkin in this sauce. I'll mm -hmm. eat the napkin right now. That is good is. sauce. It's wow. The fried calamari is nice and crispy on the outside, but it's tender and juicy on the inside, seasoned perfectly, and the sauce makes the whole dish. This is called the Gino Special. My dad's name was Gino, so he put every ingredient that we had back there <laughs> on a pizza. This is everything that we have. There you go. A little bit more color on there. Fresh mushrooms. Oh, yes. Um, there's bacon, there's pepperoni, there's meatball, onion, peppers. If you love pizza, this is your next pizza that you have to try. The Gino Special. It has a little bit of everything on the pizza itself, but it has the meatballs on there. You can peel those meatballs off and just eat those and that's your meal. That's okay, it's delicious. But the pizza, you gotta come in here and try it in the restaurant. Thank you so much for having us Thank out here. Thank you, David. Thank you so much for coming. I of appreciate course. it. Don't forget to try the homemade bread either. Gotta try the homemade bread. <laughs> Dip it in one of these sauces. 19 years here in San Antonio. There's a reason years. for it. The food is amazing. The people here are fantastic. Thank you. This is where you need to try it. Salud. Thank you. Salud. And the wine's really good too. Yes, it is. <laughs> Sorrento's is where you want to go to get an authentic taste of Italian food here in San Antonio, and I know I'll be coming back. Coming up next on Texas Eats. And then just for good measure, hit it with that oil one more time. We out. Now it's time for this week's wild secret word giveaway. The second letter is the letter A. Write down all of the letters and at the end of the show, enter them on ksat.com slash Texas Eats for your chance to win a family four pack of tickets to the San Antonio Zoo. Now it's time for Texas Eats Wild Trivia. What is the diameter of an adult elephant's eye? 2.5 inches, 3.5 inches, 6.5 inches, or 1.5 inches? We'll have the answer for you after the break.
What is the diameter of an adult elephant's eye? The answer is D. Elephant eyes are about 3.8 centimeters or 1.5 inches in diameter. Now back to Texas Eats. Joining me now here at the San Antonio Zoo is senior animal care specialist, Justin Kinkle. Thank you so much for having us out here. And right behind us, we have two of the stars out here at the San Antonio Zoo. We do. So we have <laughs> Timothy over here right behind you and Uma, our old lady, right over here behind me. Right now we're doing a drop feed that they get some of their usual daily green. Uh, you'll see they're both munching around on some romaine lettuce right now. So they offer what we call an alfalfa cube. Some people who oh. have horses are very familiar with those. We'll do some leaf eater biscuits as well. So that's another one. And then we have some smaller grain. We have some herbivore chow as well. Because <laughs> naturally they're herbivores. They're gonna eat all of that grasses and grain as well. Now, how much food does a hippo eat a day? <laughs> On average, between our two hippos, you're looking about maybe 30 to 35 pounds of food. But Timothy is only five. He just celebrated his fifth birthday last month and he's still a growing boy. So as he gets larger, he's gonna probably be closer to maybe 45 to almost 50 pounds of food every single day. Wow. Yes. So he, he graduates from a medium dog to a large dog <laughs> yes. amount of food every day. Yes. We do this every day at two o'clock so guests can see them and watch them and get them up close and personal. Um, but not sure they're actually gonna go out on land and be able to forage for a lot of their food. And are they active animals? Uh, primarily at night. So you're just gonna see them a little bit more active during that dawn and dusk time, but then at night, he loves to show off his, his graceful water work at night, which is very fun. Hey, Justin, thank you so much for showing us the hippos over here. When you think of backyard grilling, you think of steaks, you think of burgers, hot dogs even, but nobody thinks of salad. Well, guess what? I have a killer Caesar salad recipe that you can make right on your own grill. First thing you wanna do is make sure you have the right ingredients to do this. These are romaine lettuce hearts, and then you also wanna have some Parmesan cheese like this. And you also wanna have, check this out, just any kind of bread, but get some grilling spray. You wanna get your Parmesan cheese, your microplane. Your goal is that you want this to all melt together and form this little Parmesan kind of crisp that you're gonna put on top of the salad. You can add a little bit of fresh cracked pepper into it. So with the grill, you wanna have a hot side and you wanna have a cool side. You wanna set this off onto the cool side. Next thing you wanna do is get your romaine lettuce hearts, get your spray. Okay, now you wanna get some seasoning. I'm using the Goya Adobo all-purpose seasoning. <laughs> I put it on everything, man. Season the outside of them. Hit them with a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper. You want these to get a nice sear on the outside because you're really gonna awaken the greens and give it a really rich, deep flavor. Put them on the grill. 45 degree angle off to the side. And you don't wanna close the grill at this point only because you don't need to cook them all the way through. You just want those grill marks. The last thing you wanna do is get your bread. You wanna spray them. These are gonna be your croutons, all right? So you wanna make sure they're seasoned well. Hit them with that Goya. And then just for good measure, hit it with that oil one more time. We out. Once they're seasoned and oiled, put them on the grill. Smells like finely finished lettuce in the air. Check that out. Those came out perfect. And like, you're not cooking them to finish them. You just wanna get that flavor in there. Nice grill flavor on there. While the cheese is finishing on the grill, you wanna go ahead and start chopping up your ingredients here. The best way to cut lettuce is to give it three cuts. You wanna find the middle of the piece right here. Go one, flip it, two, flip it. Find another little spot, three. Perfect. And then you wanna work your way down. Push that off the side and do the same thing again. Then you wanna get all of your lettuce, put it into a big mixing bowl. Okay, once you have all your lettuce in your bowl, you wanna get your bread. And you wanna hear a nice crunch when you go into it. Oh yeah. That's, these are gonna be great, great croutons. You can get any kind of Caesar dressing you want. If you wanna make some yourself, go for it. There's a ton of recipes online. It's just pour a little bit on top of your lettuce in the mixing bowl, mix it up. And then toss in your croutons and then mix that all together. Then you wanna go ahead and load up your bowl. What would go great with this grilled chicken, a grilled sirloin steak, even some fish. Anything you want to put on top of this, a little bit of salmon would rock on top of that. At this point, hit it with that cracked black pepper. 
Pull your Parmesan cheese out the grill. There you go. Outdoor grilling, making some pretty looking salads. Hit it with a little bit more parm. At the end of it, you want to get a lemon. Absolutely amazing. Who would have thought you can make a Caesar salad on the grill? Really easy recipe to get it. Go to ksat.com slash Texas Eats. Next level. You'll never want the Caesar salad any other way. This is the way to get it. Coming up next on Texas Eats. Absolutely incredible. The texture on there, it's very similar to a, like a filet tenderloin. It's very yeah. tender. Oh, yeah. Now it's time for this week's wild secret word giveaway. The third letter is the letter R. Write down all of the letters and at the end of the show, enter them on ksat.com slash Texas Eats for your chance to win a family four pack of tickets to the San Antonio Zoo. Now it's time for Texas Eats Wild Trivia. How much food does an adult sea otter consume daily? 10 pounds? 25 pounds, 50 pounds, or five pounds? We'll have the answer for you after the break. How much food does an adult sea otter consume daily? The answer is B. A large male sea otter may consume as much as 11 kilograms or 25 pounds of food daily. Now back to Texas Eats. Hungry for some tasty gourmet bites? Then we have the perfect cure for you at the Pearl. Now we're here at the Pearl in San Antonio, Texas to go inside of the nationally acclaimed restaurant, Cured. Cured is such an iconic restaurant here in San Antonio. And to think it started in 2013, yep. and now we're in 2020, and it has now become one of the most nationally acclaimed restaurants in the oh, Alamo City. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we keep pushing, keep trying to do our best, and uh, keep, keep trying to keep San Antonio in that, uh, that national conversation. The charcuterie here is why people come out, right? This is kind yeah. of... The, the wild charcuterie boards that you can assemble. And I've been here a couple different times and you can, oh, it's like kind of a rotating yeah. list of items that can yeah. be on there. Talk to me what's on the one right here in front of us. We've got a, uh, this is a char siu sausage. So it's like a Chinese sausage made with pork. And then we've got a couple cured items. We have a, a lamb lukanka, uh, which is basically a lamb uh, salami. And then a uh, beef brazola. It's kind of like melts in your mouth. Yeah. Oh and my goodness. And of course, every, all the mustards, the pickles, the marmalade, all made made by us as well. Okra right here? Yep, okra pickles. <laughs> Incredible. 
If you're looking for a mix of charcuterie, that's what they have out here at Keurig. It's what they're known for. They have all different kinds of meats. They have strawberries, they have fruits, all kinds of different nuts on the plate as well, mustard seeds. It is so cool the way that they're pickling different items seasonally, rotating the menu. It's amazing. And then for dessert, you have this item right here that's been staring at me calling my name. Right, all right. Um, bread pudding, it's a perfect, perfect dessert for the, the time we're in because it uh, travels really well. I like that you you took something that everybody kind of has close to their heart, especially if they grew up eating it, but you've transformed it into your own idea yeah. of that. But it still tastes like home. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. really cool. With tons of different kinds of cured meats on the menu and all kinds of different cocktails, there's something here for everyone. Coming up next on Texas Eats. Oh my gosh, look at the canines on that. <laughs> He's got amazing teeth and out in the natural environment, that would help him to catch his prey. Now it's time for this week's wild secret word giveaway. The fourth letter is the letter A. Write down all of the letters and at the end of the show, enter them on ksat.com slash Texas Eats for your chance to win a family four pack of tickets to the San Antonio Zoo. Now it's time for Texas Eats Wild Trivia. How much of an orangutan's diet is composed of fruit? 90%, 50%, 10%, or 100%? We'll have the answer for you after the break. How much of an orangutan's diet is composed of fruit? The answer is A. Nearly 90% of orangutan's diet is composed of fruit. Now back to Texas Eats. Welcome back to Texas Eats. We're here at the San Antonio Zoo and with me here is Justin Kinkle now. We're right next to a dark area of the San Antonio <laughs> Zoo. Yep. Who's inside there? So right now we have our over 1,200 Siva short tail fruit bats in there. So right now they get a good bat mush, which consists of a lot of ground up fruit and stuff, which is very nutritious for them. They also get whole fruit. So you'll see there's gonna be some floating cantaloupe, some bananas, some apples, oranges, which they absolutely love to do. And they get that food throughout the entire day. So they can actually eat when they want to, kind of come and go. But again, you have to feed over 1,200 bats. So it's a lot of food that we go in there. Now they're they're pretty small. They are. But how much food do these things eat? Roughly about maybe 30 to 35 pounds of the mush itself and also the fruit and veggies included with that. So it's still a favorable amount of food. So just like that of that hippo, it's almost the same amount of food for over 1,200 <laughs> little bats. I think bats are adorable, but typically people, well, they're kind of a little afraid of bats, right? Exactly. So our seed and short tails are actually very good pollinators because they will oftentimes feed on the pollen. So they can actually help actually spread that pollen around to help germinate and grow more flowers and more plants. Now our ones here, 
Do you like mosquitoes? I don't like mosquitoes exactly. at all. Exactly. <laughs> so our ones here in Texas actually help us monitor a lot of those mosquito populations because they eat so many insects. You would not believe how much food it takes to feed all of the animals at the San Antonio Zoo daily. And right now, we're going to go talk with Katie Biesenbach to learn more. This is the place where it's all processed, it's all taken care of. But talk to me a little bit, what about a, a normal day looks like for you? Okay, so basically we are a 365 day operation. We never close, the animals have to be fed. We have to be here. Out of the whole zoo, who is the weirdest diet? I would have to say the fruit bat diet that we make. Okay. Um, basically it's pulverized fruit mixed with monkey chow. Um, <laughs> Okay, what is monkey chow? Uh, it's, a t it's a primate maintenance chow, uh -huh. specifically for certain primates in the zoo. So we mix that in so that they get their vitamins and minerals too. Okay, I like that you threw that in casually. You know, monkey chow. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, everybody knows monkey chow. That's yeah. good stuff. And I, now you have some big old pieces of meat here. What kind of meat is this? This is actually horse meat. Wow, okay, yeah. I didn't and expect that one. And it's processed specifically for animals. Oh. So it's more palatable, it's a lot leaner, and the, the carnivores really love it. I bet they do. It looks very lean. Yes. There's not a lot of marbling on the, you can see on the inside there, that almost looks like a tuna steak because Correct. it's so yes. just, it's fit looking. It's an athletic animal. There you yeah. go, it's a horse. So we don't serve anything up here that's moldy or turning or anything like that. If it's not good enough for human consumption, then it's not good enough for our animals. I love that. Because um, I can imagine if you were to feed them anything less than that, the hospital, the vets, or you know, the section over here for the animals, that'd be uh, pretty much packed every day, right? Because you would have different issues that Correct. would go off that. So that's great. Starts from the food and it makes everything else work and go fluid. Coming up next on Texas Eats. Oh yeah. You have a nice crunch on the bottom of the crust. Mm. Now it's time for this week's wild secret word giveaway. The fifth letter is the letter C. Write down all of the letters and at the end of the show, enter them on ksat.com slash Texas Eats for your chance to win a family four pack of tickets to the San Antonio Zoo. Now it's time for Texas Eats wild trivia. How many gallons of water can a whale shark filter in one hour? 70,000, 100,000, 600,000, or 400,000? We'll have the answer for you after the break. How many gallons of water can a whale shark filter in one hour? The answer is D. 
Well, sharks can filter 400,000 gallons of water per hour. Now back to Texas Eats. Welcome back to Texas Eats. We're getting wild here at the San Antonio Zoo. With me right here is Caitlin Rohde, animal care specialist. And right behind us is a cat <laughs> fishing from a tree. Oh, there it goes. They got the fish right out of the tree. So this is Dusky, and he is a fishing cat. And today is kind of a fun day for him because he's getting an entire salmon as enrichment. I wanted him to kind of work for it a little bit, so we hung it in a tree. And I probably could have hung it a little bit higher to <laughs> help him get that exercise. That yeah. But he's getting a lot of great exercise right now just carrying it around, because that fish is a little bit bigger than one of his normal food items that we would offer him. Is that how much food it's gonna eat for like a day, two days, or is this kind of gonna be like fill them up for a while? There are days out in their natural environment that if they eat a really big meal, they're not gonna eat much for the next day or two because they're full, they're digesting, uh, and that's just kind of what cats do. Now we're heading up near the rim in San Antonio, Texas to go check out an iconic American steakhouse. Now we're here by La Quintera in San Antonio to go inside Ruth's Chris Steakhouse to see what they're cooking up. Joining us now is Adrian Roman. He's the regional manager for Ruth's Chris here in San Antonio. Thank you so much for being out here and letting us come in and look at all this delicious food. Yeah, it's in our front pleasure. Of us. Now, talk to me what's going on. There's a whole three course meal in front of us and it looks fantastic. For a starter, we have our shrimp voodoo which are eight uh, shrimp, they're butterfly cut, and they're tossed in our spicy voodoo sauce. We have the cucumber salad in the center, so kind of like offset the balance a little bit of the flavors. And then for your main course here, we have our classic surf and turf, and it's part of our classic menu, and uh, right now we're currently running this. It's with the six ounce filet mignon with the lobster tail, it's five ounces, and a sizzling platter. And then for dessert, our classic cheesecake, and basically that kind of speaks for itself. We've had that since probably day one. This is incredible. Excellent. Please you know, enjoy. The voodoo shrimp has a nice little bite at the at the end of it. It's like a little spice kick there, but it's buttery. It has really nice seasoning to it, and has a really nice texture, a little crunch on the outside. This looks absolutely fantastic. And of course, the main dish right here, the surf and turf. You've got to go in here and get some of that. So, what kind of steaks are y'all serving this up? This is prime aged beef. It's predominantly top two percent. It's corn fed, so it's very tender, very mm. soft. It's buttery, and absolutely. It right, and it's well seasoned on the outside, but. You really get a lot of the notes from the meat itself. So it's not like the seasoning's overpowering the cut, and it's so tender. That is melting your mouth good. When you think of a steakhouse, you want the surf and turf. Absolutely. This is the cheesecake right here. It just looks insane, y'all. Just look at this thing. I mean, this is a massive serving right here. When it comes to your table, <laughs> you will be intimidated, but don't worry, you can take it home if you don't finish it. Absolutely. It's just a, a beautiful, simple dish. That's all it is. Oh, yeah. You have a nice crunch on the bottom of the crust. Look at this. Mm. Wow. It's got a little sour bite to it, but then you have all the fruit on the side, so it's gonna be that nice, sweet little contrast to this. This is killer. <laughs> Coming up next on Texas Eats. Oh my gosh, look at the canines on that. He's got amazing teeth and out in the natural environment, that would help him to catch his prey. Now it's time for this week's wild secret word giveaway. The sixth letter is the letter A. Write down all of the letters and at the end of the show, enter them on ksat.com slash Texas Eats for your chance to win a family four pack of tickets to the San Antonio Zoo. Now it's time for Texas Eats Wild Trivia. How many days can a breeding male emperor penguin go without eating? 10, 120, 150, or 60? We'll have the answer for you after the break.
How many days can a breeding male emperor penguin go without eating? The answer is B. Male emperor penguins may fast up to 120 days during courtship, breeding, and the entire incubation period. Now back to Texas Eats. Caitlin is joining us here today with the San Antonio Zoo. And Caitlin, what are we looking at right here? So this is Ando, and he is a caracal. So this species is native to Africa and one of the most fun animals that we get to work with here at the zoo. And what is it about to eat? I see a little snack. You said you have it on this like kind of shifty moving rack, right? <laughs> I do. So we like to change up where we offer them their food. And today I put a little bit of some of his meatballs. So today he's getting ground meat. Um, some of his meatballs are up on that shifting moving shelf. So he's gonna have to figure out a way to get onto the shelf, keep his balance and get his food at the same time. Kaylin, you have mentioned before with the other cats that we've seen, they kind of get a varied diet, right? Mm -hmm. You said a little bit of bones, some ground meat, not so much on one day, a little bit more on the other. Absolutely. Is this the same for this animal as well? Yeah, same for Ando. So today he's got a variety. He had a little bit of chunk meat, some meatballs that we formed up into um, fun little balls to put up on his shelf. Um, but again, he gets a variety of different things. So tomorrow he'll get something different. Oh, look at him. He's trying to figure it out. Like, okay, how am I going to get there? Exactly. Now, this is a pretty, Large. This is much bigger than the clouded leopard that we saw earlier. Which family does this cat fall into? So he also falls into the small cats category. Um, those are two of the you know, larger member of that category. But he is around uh, 45 pounds. 45 pounds. <laughs> He's a big boy. That's between a medium and a large dog for the <laughs> dog reference scale that I've created here. Um, and you know, it's about to eat some snacks up there. And then how much though, like I know we have mentioned this before, it's a varied diet, but about how much meat does it need to sustain an animal like this for a week? For a week, um, several pounds. So again, because the diet changes on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, but we'll get several pounds of different types of food. Keep your balance, bud. <laughs> <laughs> um, several pounds of different types of meat products or different types of food items. Oh my gosh, look at the canines on that. <laughs> He's got amazing teeth and out in the natural environment, that would help him to catch his prey. Uh, they're known for being able to jump well over 10 feet in the air, and wow. that helps them to catch birds while they're on the wing. Now it's time for this week's wild secret word giveaway. The seventh letter, have you figured it out, is the letter L. Write down all of the letters and at the end of the show, enter them on ksat.com slash Texas Eats for your chance to win a family four pack of tickets to the San Antonio Zoo. It's all your cool cats and kittens right behind us. The lions are well fed, they're sleepy, and they're having a great time. We had a great time here at the San Antonio Zoo, and right now the zoo needs our help more than ever. So head to their website, sazoo.org, find ways to donate, or just come out here and visit. And to get more information on all the places that you saw on today's show, head to our website, kset.com slash Texas Eats. Follow us on social media at KSAT Texas Eats, and you can watch us every Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning right here on KSAT 12, because this is how Texas Eats. Rawr! That's my best line. <laughs> <laughs>